Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share a shortcut with you that I use on my Yaesu FT891 to manually tune my antenna. Welcome back and thanks for being here. My name is Scott, call sign KE4WMF. And I had a radio discussion recently with somebody who purchased his very first HF rig. He chose a Yaesu FT891, and since he knows I have one as well, he asked me for some advice on setting up his HF antenna and tuner. He has a fixed setup, I think in an apartment complex, and I am mobile, so our needs are very different. I have two HF antennas available to me. The Yaesu ATAS 120 Alpha is up on the roof. It is fully automated. And I also have, not mounted now, but I have a Scorpion mobile HF antenna, and that one I do tune manually. So uh, two different methods for tuning the antennas. And as I was explaining to him, my rather unconventional way of getting things set up on the Scorpion, it dawned on me that it might be a little difficult for him to really understand what I'm doing because he's new to the radio. And it's tough to explain it if, if, if I can't get him to visualize it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this video here for him and all of you. Shout out to you, Sly. This is how I manually tune my HF antenna. This procedure will not apply to you if you have an automated antenna system such as the ATAS 120A. It will not apply to you if you've got a, a rig that has an internal tuner. It will not apply to you if you've got an external tuner that when you push a either a tune button on the radio or a tune button on the tuner, if you push that button and the radio comes to life and transmits and uh, aligns and tunes everything up, this video will not apply to you if you've got any of those automated systems. But if you've got a setup that requires you in the process to key a mic, or use a CW key or anything like that because you're doing a manual portion of it, then I think this video will help you. All right, so before I show you the shortcut, let me show you what the directions say you're supposed to do. So if we take a look at my radio here, I am set up on the 15 meter band and the way the radio works, for example, if I had a tuner or in my case, I have the ATAS 120 mounted, anything that's automated, what happens is when I push this button, it automatically puts the radio into a mode that has a carrier. So that could be AM, FM, or CW, maybe ready. I, I don't know what th this radio does automatically. Somebody comment below. I know somebody will be nice enough to say, hey, it, it does this, because I, I don't know what what mode it goes into. And then some of you will be mean and say, hey, what an idiot. How can you not know that? I'll just say to you, I I kind of don't care as long as I push the button and it works, but it's cool to know. In addition to switching to a mode that uses a carrier, it also reduces the output power of the radio because you don't want to blast 100 watts into an antenna that's not yet matched. And so it pulls power back to around 10 watts, I think. Now let's have a listen here before I tune in. See, so there's nothing going on there. Always, always, always take a listen before you tune on a frequency. And let's say that that was a frequency that I heard a QSO happening on, and I wanted to be a part of that. Don't tune on the frequency that, it's, that they're talking on. Move up five kilocycles, check it, listen, and then tune there, and then go back down. Moving up or down five kilocycles is not going to hurt your tune. It's just courteous. Be courteous. So... As I push this button, all of those things happen automatically. We'll check this out. All right, so that is the automatic tune. Now, if I were to do this manually by the directions, and I'm gonna do my demonstration on the 40 meter band because it will, on a, on a narrow band, like say uh, 12 meters, I can tune to the center of that band and the antenna will be in tune across the entire band. And that's true on 10, 12, 15, and 17 meters. Once I get to 20, I have to readjust just a little bit from time to time. 
but definitely on 40 meters, I have to, you have to tune as you move along. So check this out. Let me see if there's anything going on here. All right, I don't hear anything. I'm on lower sideband. And remember, if I key, nothing happens unless I actually speak KE4WMF testing. And you can see that the SWR is pretty high. So what I got to do to adjust this manually, I'm, I'm at the frequency I want to operate on. I've listened and there's nothing going on, but I have to tune it still. So I need to put it in a mode with a carrier. So what I do is I press and I hold band and then I roll over to AM. So now I'm in AM mode, but I need to adjust my power so that I don't put too much power into an unmatched antenna. So I press and hold the function key and then I scroll down to menu 16, and then uh, in this case, I'm on 04, but uh, it's 1601. Yeah, so it's 1601. You can see I've got the power set up here. So on single sideband, my power is 100 watts. AM, my power is already set to five watts. This is why I tune on AM because then when I switch to AM mode, I'm already set for five watts. I don't have to come in here and adjust this every time I want to tune the radio. Now down here, you see HF power, 50. HF power is basically everything else. So CW, FM, and data modes. I don't do CW and I don't operate on FM on HF, but I do FT8 and I want to try out some other digital modes. And for those, I don't want to go over 50 watts anyhow. So this is perfect the way I have my power limits set up. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of here. So I'm at AM 5 watts. And then what I do is key on the microphone. If I had an external tuner, then that external tuner might at that point automatically adjust its relays and everything to get everything matched up. And then I release the microphone. I'm going to use my up down keys. That's how I would adjust the ATAS. Or if I had my Scorpion mounted, then I would use the up down keys on the manual screwdriver antenna controller. So check this out. I'm going to key up. You'll see my SWR go up and then I will bring the, the SWR down by adjusting the height or the length of the coil on the ATAS. All right, that's pretty good. So now I am tuned. And then at this point, I would have to press my mode key. Let me go back to single sideband. That is the procedure for manually tuning in accordance with the directions, going through the menus and changing your modes and your power and everything, and then you're good to go. Here is the shortcut. Mind you, I am tuned right now to 72.95. If I come into memory mode, so I leave VFO, come into memory, you can see I've got a bunch of presets in here, 40, 40 tune, 40 FT8. And if I go through, I can show you that I've got these set for all of the bands. So six meters, tune, FT8, 10 meters, tune, FT8, so on and so forth through all of the bands. Okay, so... And that goes all the way up through 80 meters FT8. That would be the lowest frequency that I can operate from my mobile uh, radio here. So if I go back to 40 meters, the ones that do not say tune, I probably will rename these to say 40 meter SSB maybe, but they are programmed at my lowest allowable frequency for my privilege for the single sideband portion of the band. And so there's that. And then if I go back into memory mode, 40 meter tune, or really any of the, the different bands, this is the center of the band. And if you look closely, you can see that it switched to AM. See, if I go back, you can see lower sideband, AM, or if I go down here to, uh, to 20 meters, upper sideband, AM, right? And then 30 is uh, lower sideband, AM. And then there's the data mode for FT8. Basically, this is set for the center of my privileges. So this is 7225. And so now that I've shown you what that does, let me go back into memory mode. Take a listen here. Nothing going on. So I tune. And I went the wrong way. So then I go, go back down. 
there you go. Now it's tuned. So that is the center of the band. And then I roll back to 40 to start scrolling around in front of the frequency that I want to work on. That's the shortcut. So the shortcut is that by switching here, I've switched to AM and low power. I tune and get my match. I let up and then I come back here to lower sideband and then scroll and find my frequency. That is the shortcut. I don't know. What do you think? Is this efficient or lazy? Your choice. I think anything that can be done to streamline operations in a mobile setting is a good thing. I, I don't need so many distractions as far as changing modes and whatnot. I don't typically drive if I need to be operating and logging. I will find a place and park, but still, even in this small space, and operating anything that takes steps out and makes it easier is a good thing. So tell me what you think. Uh, feel free to ask questions if you have them. I'll be glad to answer. I just can't think of more to say about how easy this is. As always, I appreciate you being here and I will see you next time. Take care. <music>